So this week, Ubisoft unveiled the trailer for Star Wars Outlaws, an upcoming open world action game set to release in August. And the reception has been pretty bad. It's been kind of crazy to see the backlash against this game with the trailer getting dislike bombed, currently sitting at over 100,000 dislikes to only 30,000 likes. Now, there are a lot of reasons that this is happening, most notably the monetization practices surrounding the game, but also some other things as well. And in this video, we're gonna break down all of the controversy surrounding Star Wars Outlaws. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's dive into the drama. So as you can see here, Star Wars Outlaws is available on PC, PS5, and Xbox, as well as Luna Cloud. But here's where we get into the real meat and potatoes, the different editions of the game. So you've got the standard edition, which would be the full price game, and you get the base game and a little pre-order bonus for the price of $70. But if you wanna spend an additional $40, you'll get three days early access in addition to the pre-order bonus, and you get the season pass, which includes day one DLC. You'll get the Jabba's Gambit exclusive mission available at launch. Now Ubisoft actually did something similar with Assassin's Creed Valhalla where they sold a pre-order bonus mission and when I initially bought Valhalla back in 2020, um, at the time I was taking some time off of work in order to play the Cyberpunk release, but Cyberpunk got delayed and I ended up playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla instead. Now, I didn't realize that they had a pre-order bonus mission, so when I went back to play the game years later on PC, I was wondering what happened to that crazy berserker dude that we had run into, you know, the first time I played through the game. Well, it turns out that that was a bonus mission and now that content is locked onto to a version that had pre-ordered the game. And it seems like they're doing the same thing here with Star Wars Outlaws. Other studios have done this as well. I believe that Red Dead Redemption 2 had like a bank heist mission that was locked behind one of the, you know, higher tier versions of the game. Of course, you can still buy the Ultimate Edition or whatever it is and get access to that mission, but I think day one DLC is kind of a scummy practice. Like if you wanna sell you know, substantial expansions down the road, that's one thing, but having like a pre-order mission or something that's already in the game at launch, I think is just kind of a scummy practice. Now you do get the season pass, which will include two DLCs that will release after launch, but we're kind of going into that blind right now because you're not going to know what the DLC is. Um, this is also something that Ubisoft did with Far Cry 6 and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And typically a season pass will give you all of the DLC for a single player game. But with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you only got the first two expansions and then they released a third expansion down the line that was another $40. So you got the base game of Valhalla for $60. Then you would pay $40 for the season pass, which got you Wrath of Druids and Siege of Paris. And then if you wanted to get the final DLC, Dawn of Ragnarok, that was another $40. So you're $140 deep into Valhalla at this point. And that's before we've even talked about microtransactions or anything of that nature. You also get the cosmetics pack, which, you know, not really that big of a deal. But yeah, so, I mean, this is a steep upsell for some DLC and... This is kind of the business model that Ubisoft has been shifting to within the last few years. We saw that AC Valhalla was their most successful Assassin's Creed game, selling over a billion dollars in revenue, and a lot of that had to do with the DLC structure of the game. Now, at this point, we do not have any sort of like confirmation of what the cash shop is going to be like, but you bet your ass there's going to be one in this game because there has been in pretty much every Ubisoft game that has come out in the last few years. On top of this, then you get the Ultimate Edition, which is $130, where you'll get all of the same things of the Gold Edition, in addition to the Rogue Infiltrator Bundle, which is, uh, again, some more cosmetic packs here, and then you get the digital art book. Yeah, this is this is kind of wild, $130. So let's compare this to the Deluxe Edition of Baldur's Gate 3, for instance. So for the Deluxe Edition, you're gonna get some physical goodies in addition to digital stuff as well. You've got the po you've got posters, you've got stickers, you've got the original soundtrack, and for all of this, you only pay $80. So basically for $10 more than you pay for the base cucked version of Star Wars Outlaws, you can get the deluxe edition of Baldur's Gate 3. And if you think these pricing models are kind of crazy, it's because it all seems to be a funnel leading you into buying their subscription model, which is the fourth version that you can get here, day one with Ubisoft Plus. 
So this is $17.99 a month, and you get access to their full library of games that are available through Ubisoft Plus, and you get all of the bonuses of the most expensive version of the game, including the early access, the season pass, and everything. Really what they're trying to do here, it seems, is to start getting people to buy into their subscription service because they know that a certain percentage of people will stay subscribed after the first month. Now, some people will get a good deal here, I would say, by you know, paying $18, playing through as much of the game as they want, and then, you know, canceling their subscription. Uh, that's actually what I did when Avatar Frontiers of Pandora came out. And I'm thankful that I didn't spend $70 or, you know, God knows over $100 for that game, because after playing it for a couple hours, I was like, eh, this isn't for me. And then I canceled my Ubisoft subscription. So I think for people who want to dip into this game, that's honestly the most attractive uh, price that you're going to get for it. And I think there's a reason for that. They clearly want to build out their uh, subscription service here. And it seems like their pricing model is reflecting that. So basically, Ubisoft is going to win either way, whether you buy one of these expensive versions of the game uh, or you buy into their subscription service, they're going to be the winner here. Uh, the only way Ubisoft loses is if this game ends up being a huge commercial flop. Um which I guess, you know, we'll wait and see. Again, despite all of the practices that they've been engaging in, Ubisoft is making more money with these business practices, and there's a reason why they keep doing them. It's because they're working. Again, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a billion dollars they made off of that game. Kind of disheartening to see this sort of uh, pricing structure. You know, I remember when games were, you know, back in my day, I remember when games were $60 or $50 and you got the full game. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Apparently you pay $70. This is like the cucked version of the game. You get, you get nothing. You, do, you, pay, you play it late. Let's be real here. Three days early access, that's the launch day. A lot of people are going to be playing that three days early access and that's going to be the period when people are talking about the story, making YouTube content. So, you know, if you're not playing right at the beginning, there's a chance you're going to get spoiled. And then, of course, you don't get any of the DLC or anything else on top of that. So if you're, if you're buying the standard edition of this game, you're getting like cocked. <laughs> it's terrible. So I wanted to take a look at some of the comments on this video, too, to get a sense of what the feedback is. And there are some bangers in here. Some people have left some really funny comments on here. So chill, guys. They haven't even shown the in-game shop yet. <laughs> yeah, as I said, there's almost certainly going to be a microtransaction store in this game that'll sell cosmetics, maybe even sell, you know, maps, upgrade materials. Who knows? Like, that's kind of what they did with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Odyssey, and Origins. So who knows? They're supposed to be outlaws, but they come off as residents of a gated community in California. She has a higher microtransaction count than even Master Yoda. <laughs> it's an opportunity to make millions. It's an opportunity to make millions. Is this a fourth wall break? Ubisoft plus Disney Star Wars equals credibility zero. <laughs> Now, one of the other aspects that is fueling this controversy is the online component of the game. Again, Star Wars Outlaws is a single player game. And I have seen some people talking about that you need an internet connection to play the game, and that's only half true. You will need an internet connection to download and install the game, even if you buy the physical edition of it, but you will be able to play the game offline. But there is concern with games like this, particularly from a company like Ubisoft, who has been known to sunset or end of life their like online features for different video games, like you know some of the older Assassin's Creed games had various online components and multiplayer functionality turned off over the past few years. We had them just end of life an entire game called The Crew, um, which has led to you know some backlash for the company. And again, if you're buying these products that you don't own, which again, Ubisoft was infamous for having one of their executives say that gamers need to be comfortable uh, not owning their games anymore if they want to be able to push their subscription model, which they clearly do with Ubisoft Premium. Uh, yeah, all these things are just not a good look for Ubisoft, and I can see why people are upset about this thing. So one of the other controversies surrounding Star Wars Outlaws is the protagonist, Kay Vess. Now in Star Wars Outlaws, we can only play as a female protagonist. Um, after seeing the trailer, I was kind of disappointed in this because personally, I would prefer something 
where we had a, you know, create your own character or at least had, you know, a male and female version that we could pick at the beginning of the game. Kind of similar to what Ubisoft did with Far Cry 6, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and even Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. But instead, we are locked into playing as a female protagonist. Now, I don't have anything, you know, against that inherently. I know some people will take issue with that, and I know that, you know, female protagonists in video games has become a bit of a, like, a culture war touch point at times. Uh, but for me personally, like, I just think Kay seems kind of lame. Um, she doesn't really seem like this badass kind of bounty hunter type character. The sort of fantasy I want to experience in a game like Star Wars Outlaws is, you know, being this you know, renegade, like criminal underlord, you know, trying to go out there and basically make money any way you can, kind of like a Han Solo type character. And I don't know, I just, I just don't quite see it with this character, even though that's what they're painting her as. So again, I don't think it's going to impede my enjoyment of the game, but I do think it's going to be a little bit harder to do the old self insert into this game and, and kind of play the, the character that I want to play in this world. I think what I'm really looking for is a Star Wars open world RPG. <laughs> And that's clearly not what we're getting with this game, which, you know, it is what it is. I will say the KOTOR remake, I guess, is still in production or has not been completely canceled. There have been rumors that the KOTOR remake was canceled, but apparently the studio that was working on it has split off from the investment group that had reportedly canceled this project and that they are continuing to work on it. So KOTOR remake's not entirely dead. I'm skeptical until I see anything, but... You know, I'm a huge Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic fan, uh, one of my favorite games, and certainly my favorite Star Wars game of all time, but it's been like over 20 years since it came out, it's a little bit janky and outdated, you know, by today's standards, and I would love to see a remake of that game. I'm still gonna play Star Wars Outlaws when it comes out, you know, I'm hoping that the gameplay is fun at least, and that there's a cool open world for us to explore. I do have fun with a lot of Ubisoft games, despite you know, all the memeing and criticism that they get. They do make decently fun games most of the time. So maybe I'll get a review code for this game too. Who knows? Uh, I did get one for Assassin's Creed Mirage. And if I do, you know, I'll be sure to check it out and let you guys know how the gameplay actually is when we're closer to launch. Um, but until then, you know, I'm just going to keep my eye on the game. I'm going to remain like uh, skeptical, <laughs> let's say. Um, I The bar is the bar is pretty low at this point for what this game is going to be. So there you have it. We've dove into all the controversy surrounding Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, let me know what you think about this game in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG and action game videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.